Hello students, welcome back to your one and only favorite YouTube channel, Tomasang Tutorial. Myself, Krishan Kulung, and today we are ready to go for a new chapter in chemistry, the most important chapter and the most easiest chapter, okay? And the name of the chapter is Periodic Classification of Elements. Periodic Classification of Elements. Let us first understand the term periodic and the term classification and then we will proceed, okay? Let us first understand these two terms and then we will proceed. What does the term periodic mean and what does the term classification mean, okay? Let me give you an example to make you understand what does the term periodic mean. I'm writing the days of a week, okay? This is Sunday, this is Monday, this is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There are seven days in a week, isn't it? So, if you observe this, what you see is each day of a week is repeated after a gap of six days, isn't it? Each day of a week is repeated after a fixed gap of six days. Let's take for an example so Sunday, okay? Sunday is repeated after a gap of six days. One, two, three, four, five, six. After six days comes the seventh day, Sunday, isn't it? Isn't it? Are you getting my point? Any day. Let's take an example of Tuesday. One, two, three, four, five, six. After six days come, the seventh day is Tuesday, isn't it? Any day of a week is repeated after a fixed gap of six days. So the days of week can be called as periodic. What does the term periodic mean? Periodic mean the thing which repeats itself after a fixed interval is called periodic. Okay, The thing which repeats itself after a fixed interval is called periodic. So periodic means the term which repeats itself after a fixed interval isn't it? So the days of week can be called periodic because they repeat itself after a fixed interval of six days. I hope you got so. Similarly, months of a year are also periodic. January repeats itself after a fixed interval of 11 months, isn't it? Similarly, September repeats after a fixed interval of 11 months. So each month of a year repeats itself after a fixed interval of 11 months. That means months of a year are also periodic. In the same way, leap year can also be considered as periodic because Leap year repeats itself after a fixed interval of three years, isn't it? The fourth year is leap year. After a fixed interval of three years, leap year repeats itself and the fourth year becomes leap year. I hope so. You got this. The thing which repeats itself after a fixed interval of not only time, after a fixed interval, okay? The thing which repeats itself after a fixed interval, it's called periodic, okay? I hope you got the term periodic. Now let's move on to the next one, classification. What does the term classification mean? Let me give you another example to make you understand the term classification. We have potato, isn't it? We have potato, tomato, brinjo, etc. And we classify them as vegetables, isn't it? We classify them as vegetables. And we have history, chemistry, mathematics, and we classify them as books, isn't it? We classify them as books. And we have t-shirt, pant, jacket, etc. And we classify them as clothes. Are you getting me? We do this type of classifications at home, isn't it? We classify these things at home and keep them separately. Vegetables are generally kept in refrigerators, isn't it? Refrigerators. 
we classify history, chemistry, mathematics, and we classify them as books and we keep them in bookshelf. Bookshelf, isn't it? Are you getting me? We classify t shirt, pants, jacket, etc. as clothes and we keep them in a boat. A boat. Are you getting me? We classify potato, tomato, brinjal, etc. as vegetables and we generally keep them inside a refrigerator. <coughs> okay. We classify history, chemistry, mathematics, etc. as books and we keep them generally we keep them in bookshelf. We classify t-shirt, pants, jacket, etc. as clothes and we generally keep them inside a cupboard, isn't it? So why do we classify these things? Because it makes us easier to find, it makes us easier to deal with. Let me give you an example, okay? If you want to wear a clothes, you don't open a refrigerator and look for your jacket inside a refrigerator, do you? Isn't it? Are you getting my point? So if you want to cook, you don't go to a bookshelf. You should open refrigerator to find vegetables. You don't find vegetables inside a bookshelf, isn't it? So classification is done even at home to make our life easy, isn't it? To find the things in an easier way. Okay. I hope you understood the term classification. Okay. Now in the olden days when there were hardly one or two elements classification was really not needed classification of elements was really not needed at that time because there were only one or two elements so each element could be studied individually isn't it but later on with time when more and more number of elements were discovered classification of elements was really needed because to study each and every element individually became really impossible. So to overcome that, classification of elements was needed and so classification of elements began. The history of classification of elements. We are going to proceed with the topic, history of classification of elements, okay? I hope you got my point. The first scientist who came up with the idea of classification of element was the German scientist. German scientist German scientist in the year 1817 okay named named Johann Dobrinia German scientist named Johann Dobrinia in the year 1817 came up with the idea of classification of elements and he classified elements in groups of three and called them triads, okay? Let me write that. Dobrinier, Dobrinier made group groups of three elements, three elements having similar properties properties and call them triads the first scientist the first person who came up with the idea of classification of element was German scientist and his name was Johann Dobrinier in the year 1817. He put forward his law and that law is called law of triads. Okay. Dobrinier made up groups, made groups of three elements having similar properties and called them triads. And what was his law? According to his law, atomic weights, this is his law. Okay. Atomic weights, sorry, atomic weight of the middle element, middle element, middle element is the average, it's equal to, it's equal 
two are very close to very close to the average of the first and the third element third element this this is law okay according to dobrenier he classified three elements and called them triads okay element a element b and element c he made a group of three elements and called each group called triads okay and this group of three elements is called triads tri means three isn't it tri means three bi means two mono means one isn't it okay this is a single so it will be called triad so he made group of three element each he made groups of three element each and called them triad okay now according to his law atomic weight of the middle element atomic weight of the middle element is the average of atomic weights of the first and the third element okay before we understand his law let us first understand what atomic weight is atomic weight means you know if i draw a structure of atom there is proton and neutron in the center and that is called nucleus and outside the nucleus electrons revolves around the nucleus in their imaginary orbit isn't it or shells okay the center of the atom is called nucleus and within the nucleus is protons and neutrons okay so atomic weight or we generally call atomic mass atomic weight or atomic mass is considered to be the mass of the nucleus of atom okay please remember atomic weight or atomic mass is considered to be the mass of the nucleus of atom mass of the nucleus means mass of proton plus mass of neutron mass of proton plus mass of neutron is the atomic mass of that atom we don't consider the mass of electrons remember we don't consider the mass of electrons why because the mass of electrons is so small that it is negligible it is negligible when we consider the mass of nucleus okay so when we talk about atomic weight we talk about the mass of protons plus the mass of neutrons that is the mass of nucleus okay mass of nucleus is the atomic mass of that atom okay i hope you got what is atomic weight now let us understand dobrenier triad okay according to dobrenier the mass of the middle atomic mass of the middle element is equal to or very close to the average of atomic mass of the first and the third element okay that means atomic average means what atomic weight atomic weight of a plus atomic weight of atomic weight of c divided by 2 isn't it this gives the mass of this gives the average of atomic weight of a and atomic weight of c and this average of atomic weight of a and atomic weight of c is atomic weight of b okay atomic weight of the middle element that is atomic weight of b did you get my point okay i'll explain again the average of atomic weight of atomic sorry <laughs> the average of atomic weight of a and atomic weight of c that is atomic weight of a plus atomic weight of c divided by 2 gives the average of atomic weight of a and atomic weight of c and the average of atomic weight of a and atomic weight of c is equal to or very close to atomic weight of the middle element that is atomic weight of b okay he he formulated or he put forward his law this law okay i hope you got this now let us see his triad where did he apply his application of triads and then we will understand better okay the first triad which he gave us the first triad first triad was lithium sodium potassium
potassium okay lithium sodium and potassium he made a group of these three elements and call triad 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 means three isn't it triad he made group of these three elements lithium sodium and potassium and call it triad okay let's check whether his law is valid in this case or not okay we know the atomic weight of lithium atomic weight of lithium equals to 7 isn't it atomic atomic weight of sodium we know that is 23 isn't it atomic weight of potassium is 39 isn't it we know this we know this now isn't it because we have modern periodic table we know everything but in the olden days this was a bit difficult task because they were just investigating these elements at the time isn't it now we have everything so we know this atomic weight of lithium is 7 atomic weight of sodium is 23 and atomic weight of potassium is 39 now i am trying to verify the triad of dobrynier okay the triad of dobrynier according to dobrynier the atomic weight of the average of atomic weight of lithium and potassium the ends one isn't it the first and the last one the first and the third one gives the atomic weight of sodium isn't it so average of atomic weight of atomic weight of lithium and sodium is lithium is what seven isn't it atomic weight of lithium is seven plus atomic weight of potassium is 39 39 divided by two gives the average isn't it seven plus 39 by two gives the average of atomic weights of lithium and potassium so 7 plus 39 is 9 plus 7 16 6 3 plus 1 is 4 46 by 2 and that is 2 2 the 4 2 3 the 6 is equal to 23 wow it's correct exactly isn't it so according to Dovrenier the atomic weight of sodium should be equal to 23 or very close to 23 now we exactly got 23 are you getting my point and that is Dobrynier is passed here, isn't it? We can say Dobrynier succeeded in this trial. Okay, now let us check the property. Lithium, sodium, potassium. All these elements are alkali metals. Okay, lithium, sodium and potassium. All these are alkali metals. All of these lose one electron. All of this has valency one. All of these elements are electropositive in nature. So, the properties of these elements also matches so this is a successful trial given by Dobrynier okay please take the screenshot I'm going to the next trial okay the next trial given by Dobrynier is second trial okay second trial chlorine bromine and iodine He called this a triad. He made a group of these three elements, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and called a triad. Let us write the atomic weight of chlorine. Atomic weight of chlorine is equal to 35.5. Atomic weight of bromine equals to 80 atomic weight of iodine equals to 127 okay now let's take his try according to Dovrenier the average of atomic weights of first and the third element should give should be equal to or very close to the atomic weight of the middle element isn't it let me tell you again the average of atomic weights of first and the third element should be very close to or 
exactly equal to the atomic weight of the middle element, isn't it? So let's check average, average, okay? 35.5, that is atomic weight of chlorine, 35.5 plus the third element, iodine, the atomic weight of third element, 127, isn't it? Divided by 2 gives the average, isn't it? So 7 plus 5 is 12, 2 plus 3, 5 plus 1, 6, 1. 162.5. This gives divided by 2. 2 8 the 16. 2 1 the 2. Point 2 to the 4. 2 1 the 2. 2 to the 4. 5 to the other 10. 81.25. Isn't it? We got 81.25. The exact atomic weight of bromine is 80, but according to Dobrinier triad, the atomic weight of bromine should be 81.25, which is very, very close to 80, isn't it? 81.25 is close to 80, so this is also can be considered as a successful trial. He said the atomic weight of the middle element should be very close to or exactly equal to the average of atomic weights of the first and the third element, isn't it? So 81.25 is close to 80, so we can consider this to be the right trial, isn't it? Now let's check the properties. Chlorine, bromine and iodine, all these three elements falls in the halogen group. So all these are non-metals, okay. These are strong non-metals and they are all electronegative elements, okay. And their atomic size are really small as compared to electropositive elements like lithium, sodium and potassium. So their properties are also similar to each other and their atomic weights also we found to be correct. So this is also a successful triad given by Dobrinier. I hope you understood this. Now let us move on to the third triad, okay? The third triad given by Dobrinier. Okay. He made a group of three elements, calcium, calcium, strontium and barium, okay? He made group of these three elements and called a triad. Are you getting my point? He made group of these three elements, calcium, strontium and barium and called a triad, okay? Let us write the atomic weights of each element first and then, then check, okay? Calcium, atomic weight of calcium, atomic weight of Calcium is 40, isn't it? Atomic weight of strontium is 88. Atomic weight of barium is 137. Okay? Now, according to Dobrinier, we know that the atomic weight of the middle element is very close to or uh, exactly equal to the average of atomic weights of the first and the third element, isn't it? So let us take the average of the atomic weights of the first and the third element, that is atomic weight of calcium, 40, plus atomic weight of barium, that is 137, when divided by 2 gives us the average, let us check out, 7 plus 0 is 7, 3 plus 4 is 7, and 1, 177 by 2. So let us divide 2 1 the 2, 2 8 the 16, 1 2 8 the 16, 17, 2 5 the 10. This gives 88.5, isn't it? So according to Dobrinier, the atomic weight of strontium should be 88.5, but the exact atomic weight of strontium is 88. And 88 is very, very close to 88.5, isn't it? The atomic weight of strontium according to Dobrinier is 88.5, but the exact atomic weight of strontium is 88. So 88.5 is very, very close to 88. So we can say this triad is a successful triad, isn't it? Now let us check out the properties of these three elements, calcium, strontium, and barium, okay? Calcium, strontium, and barium, all these are called alkali earth metals, okay? They have similar properties. They are all metals. They lose two electrons. In their, in their outermost orbit when they chemically combine with other elements, I mean with non-metals, okay, 
when they chemically combine with non metals they lose two electrons and become electropositive okay so all these are non metals having similar properties and they form a tri according to dobermeier okay okay this is the triad law put forward by dobermeier in the year 1817 now let us see the limitations of triad okay at the time of dobermeier at the time of dobermeier almost 16 elements were known to mankind to mankind during the time of dobermeier almost 16 elements were known to mankind but his limitations okay limitations limitations means demerits we can call demerits demerits limitations are demerits of dobermeier triad is dobermeier dobermeier could only classify nine elements nine elements nine elements out of 16 elements known so far so far okay i hope you got this dobermeier could only classify nine elements out of 16 elements known so far he could not form more triads he could only form three triads and this triad and his triad stopped okay he could not continue forming more triads with the remaining elements means there were six more elements isn't it nine elements were uh, sorry seven more elements were left nine elements were classified but classified means let me give an example lithium lithium sodium and potassium what does the term classified means if you know the property of sodium no need to know the property of lithium and potassium the property of lithium and potassium will be similar to the property of sodium okay classification means that if you open cupboard you won't find vegetable obviously you will find <laughs> clothes isn't it not books also if you open refrigerator you won't find clothes inside it similarly when you know the value of sorry when you know the property of sodium you will know the property of this and this also these two are also metals not non metals okay fluorine chlorine chlorine bromine and iodine if you know the property of bromine this bromine is electronegative element this is non metal if you know this chlorine and iodine is also electronegative element is also non metal okay so the classification means this so out of 16 elements he could only form three groups means he could only classify nine elements and still seven elements were left he should have at least classified five groups isn't it three fives of 15 at least five triads should have been made by dobermeier but he could not make five triads he could only make three triads so he could not classify all the elements known at that time so his triad law law of triad was disregarded later on okay we will study about the newland's law of octave in our next video okay till then stay happy stay blessed and do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get more notification sorry to get notifications for more video uploads thank you